Hey there, team. How you doing? Uh, oh, this is me. Okay, cool. Um, alrighty. Okay, well, this, this is a 2v2. <laughs> and so, we are now on to the 0 0.98 battles. Uh, so I do have quite a few of them stocked up, but uh, I would definitely be putting out a, a little message here of just like, hey, um, I'm ready now to, I guess, like accept 0 0.98 uh, battles if you have any to throw my way. Um, as I say, general rules apply with that of just like, I don't really, yeah, don't really mind about sort of whatever theme or, or situation. Just, um, I say, don't, don't, don't send me something that's going to make somebody upset or embarrassed basically you know we all have uh, we definitely all have some bad fights now and again and um you know it's better not to <laughs> you know it's, it's it's better to just let them go uh so that's i, I guess that's sort of my only rule pretty much uh so nothing too one-sided or anything like that um i will probably be posting some of my own sort of pretty one-sided fights of course uh but that's um just you know because hey that's that's only me analyzing my mistakes but yeah don't send me something that uh, unless you are of course on the on the losing end of a situation but yeah don't send me something that's like oh look i just destroyed this this new player especially because we've got a lot of new players right now with the release of 0 0.8 we do have a lot of new players so there will be people making silly mistakes that's the way it goes there will be new players and there will be returning players that haven't touched or forged for bloody three years <laughs> and uh and are forgetting things they've not touched medieval 2 for three years they're coming back from warhammer total war or some guff like that and they're like wait why where's the magic and they're screwing up so just um yeah be be kind <laughs> but yeah also then um i've been putting out basically videos every day for the past little while so i don't know what i want to do schedule wise i don't know if i want to just keep throwing out videos as soon as they're ready or if i want to um go back to say a two week or one one video a week or two video a week schedule i don't think i'm going to be able to keep up either of course and um, the reason i've been able to slam out all these videos so quickly is just because i've i've just gone back from a ship so i do have a lot of free time i'm just vibing about <laughs> very very free and clear that's not going to be the case for much longer of course i'm going to be busy again and i'm going to be falling behind with stuff uh so we will see what we can do um uh, I think either way, if I do two videos a week or one video a week even, I might end up not being able to upkeep that schedule. Um, so yeah, I mean, let, let me know if you've got a preference. Would you prefer me just to throw videos out as soon as they're ready? Uh, or do you want me to try and create a bit, of a bit of a schedule so that things are a bit longer, so there's less, hopefully less space between between gaps of content? But yeah, we can, we can see. I'll talk about that over the next few videos. But anyway, welcome to 0 0.98. Playing goes Gondor today. I've got my armored up Gondorian archers. Um, when it comes to a field battle, winning the skirmish fight is a big thing for me. Now, for me, winning the skirmish fight doesn't actually mean killing all of their archers. It just means outlasting their ammunition. Uh, that If I can do that, and if I can control the flow of the fight after that, or I can make them attack me, I'm in a very good place. So I do put a lot of money into survivable archers there. So I've got two of them out front, buying them armored up Gondorian spears. Again, if you do end up shooting past them, they'll shrug that damage off quite nicely. Also, it just stops you dealing with my archers uh, by using your cav or anything like that, hopefully. Veterans of Asgillia there, I've got my general in with them, so I do armor them up just to help make them, you know, keep them quite safe. But it's also an archer unit to give me a little bit more control uh, in that ranged fight. Buying them, I've got a good swarm of armor upgraded Gondorian infantry, hopefully just to sort of go toe to toe with my Rudauer foes up there. I know Rudauer does have a lot of armor piercing, but hopefully my armor upgrading Gondorian infantry can, can outlast most of their non armor piercing forces. One of them here, unfortunately, just got the pauldrons, uh, didn't have enough money for everybody to have that plate. By then, the Pelagar Marines, uh, Guards of Asgeliath there, just to poke and prod at the enemy forces. Fountain Guard, of course, with that two-handed spear now, not a phalanx. And then Axemen of Lasanak. Uh, triple, one, two, three Axemen of Lasanak. They're all, again, with that heavy armor upgrade. So very, very armored up unit. Uh, well, very, very armored up army. Over here, I've got my Pinneth Gallon Cav. Uh, no armor upgrade for them. That's just because I forgot. 
<laughs> no, I think if I could go back, I would have happily taken an armor upgrade off one of the infantry and put it on the cav. That was really just a I, I, an oopsie daisy move. Uh, but yeah, good little Lancer unit of, of cavalry there, and a nice green tinge to the otherwise very black and silver army. Uh, to my left, I do have uh, my man here playing as uh, Dol Amroth. I'm never really sure with names, unfortunately, when people change their names all the time. Is this hidden? I can't remember. Um, so we got, anyway, the trebuchet of Numenor uh, playing, well yeah, it was Dol Amroth. So we do have some artillery, which is good. It's nice to have artillery, I just don't like using it. Uh, Swan Knights there alongside these Talon Knights and Halberdiers. Very, very... Well, of course, these Swan Knights are going to be moving, not going to be fighting as combined phallics like that. The Aratherum as well, alongside some Belfast Marines. Uh, again, this Talon Knight Halberd and Swan Knight Block. It's very, very interesting the way he's deployed that. Over here on the left, Perithil Horse Guards. Uh, Haven Knights of Athel and Perithil Horse Archers. So heaps and heaps of cavalry. Again, like my brain would absolutely explode with this much cav. I think our initial plan was really just I was going to move in close to the trebuchet, he was going to mess around with the cav, and we'll just whatever happens, happens. So Josh is up here. He has got his beasts of Gorgoroth uh, in the back there. Some Melkor's abominations, those Melkor's chosen now, of course, with much more of perhaps, you know, more of a, an intimidating name. The uh, Orc Javis with that Orc Fodder backing, well, yeah, moving up. Uruk Infantry alongside these Uruk Halberds with that Troll Drummer as uh, not not the captain of the unit, but uh, but moving along with them. Of course, that Troll Drummer not really got the same strength as the standard Troll, but very nice and cool for the aesthetic of the of the Mordor forces. Temple Inquisitors there charging with that black. Is that a missing texture on that sword, or is it meant to just be a a black iron blade. That's quite cool either way. Um, Uruk infantry there, about to get burned up <laughs> nicely uh, by a trebuchet hit. Um, the other one, I don't know if the other one's fired yet or not, but Josh really and, and his sort of tightly packed forces are going to be the initial focus of that firepower. And then over here we've got Kuril playing as Wood Hour. So he's got Serenity Pikes, definitely capable of going toe to toe with my uh, guards of his Gilliath. Uh, rude Hour Swordsmen, again I'm hoping my armor upgraded Gondor Infantry are going to be able to tank the, the damage from those Rude Hour Swordsmen and we can we can pay it back. Then uh, Enslavers, some cool Fell Maidens, I definitely don't want these girls get, you know, grabbing my um, my Pit of Gillen Cav. Herenvay Nobles, I definitely don't want them to grab my Cav, with an armor upgrade it looks like there. So they really are quite menacing of that mace and melee. That's something that, you know, a mace wielding knight is, is quite a quite a frightening concept, especially if you're a man like Dol Amroth, having an AP knight chasing your cavalry down. In the back here, more rude our swordsmen, axe throwers, and it more troll hunters. So it's all gonna happen quite quick. Uh, let's uh, let's stick at 0 0.5 for now. Just see sort of initial reactions. You see, I'm moving my cavalry around. Um, I'm sort of seeing this situation, I'm realizing like, shoot, I should have probably, I should have been a little bit closer to the trebuchet, um, because over here takes me far too long to realize this, because of course I like a nice organized fight. I like to come in, have a skirmish phase, have a little melee phase, and then have the, the proper clash. But the boys are not allowing me to do that here. You're seeing a proper charge into the main lines. You're seeing these Kofal Maidens coming very far forward now. Kind of scaring off my archers, getting them back. Don't really mind about taking some javelin fire into, my, into the front of the Gondorian spears. That's kind of what they're for. But you can see the direction that Kuro's going for. He's going right for that trebuchet. He's going right for the Dol Amroth forces. And that's not something, and that's something I don't react to anywhere near quickly enough. Because Mordor is coming flying on in for Dol Amroth as well and uh, it's going to become basically a 2v1 up against Dol Amroth's very um, small but elite, very exceptional defensive line but uh, tiny defensive line. All these infantry are really meant to do is hold the line while the Cav does the damage but when he's outnumbered as badly as he is about to be it's it's a bit scary. So I did manage to catch those Kofel Maidens you can see with my spears chasing them off but they did actually get into my archers didn't they? They inflicted a bit of damage to my archers there. Dear me, quite a bit of damage. Um, and yet so chasing off some nobles there 
The Arathirum, although the Arathirum aren't going to like fighting an AP adversary, you can see a casualty was taken, they will come out victorious there, the Arathirum are just that good. Or here my spears managed to catch the cold fell maidens as they've been throwing, so they're not really built- oh goodness me, <laughs> she's just yeeted him. Uh, but we should be able to inflict a good bit more damage on the Cold Fell Maidens, trap them in place while they are a Theorem fight. I'm sorry, because we will. I know a lot of people really don't like to go through these battles. Oh, I'll go through at like 0 0.7. I know a lot of people really don't like to go through battles very slowly, but when it comes to me analysing my own fights, I like to go through it really slowly so that I can sort of see what I've done right, what I've done wrong. And uh, so, yeah, I do, I do, I, I do apologise, but that's that's the way it is. Them's the breaks, kids. Um, so yeah, the horse guard coming around, um, yeah, just again, this beefy, beefy calf, just far more calf than I can really handle. Swan knights there getting quickly approached by the Uruk infantry, not really wanting to get tied down, but again, you can see the rude hour force is coming, slamming on in, and this is when I really should have been faster on the mark. You can see I've still not really moved my infantry, even after all this, I was still just like, oh, well, you know, I'm okay. But it's not about me right now. It's about Dol Amroth is about to get swarmed. And you can see Kuro's doing the right thing here. He's leaving, you know, maybe some scraps to deal with me. My army is, it's, it's built to last. It's built to win quite slowly. It's not really a, a quickly grind them down sort of army. So all he has to do is leave behind a few guys and, and it'll be difficult for me to take them out. Our theorem here about to get snapped up. Pilgrim Marines about my Pilgrim Marines about to get grabbed. You see, I did send over some some reinforcements, but what I should have done was I should have grabbed my entire army and started pushing them in to catch Rudauer. Don't let him do this. Um, whereas instead, I basically just detached some forces and sent them over piece by piece. Over here, the main line, because of just how impressive this Dol Amro force is, it's very small. But where they are having these fights, they are absolutely gutting the um the attacking uruk infantry even with those olakai coming forward that should go not too bad for the for the dolamroth forces but he needs uh, you know with all of these rudauer forces coming in and and being brought to bear as well he's not going to be able to be anywhere near as free with his calves as he wants to be over here my pinnathgill and calf got a charge in but yeah so i got caught by those nobles receiving some axes into the back as i run away you can see I have sort of done a little charge on forward there, I've engaged Kuro's infantry, but once again, you know, I need this line to break. I need this line to break so I can start getting into his into the bulk of the line, I can start flanking around and maybe even reach Mordor. But I'm not built to deal with this quickly at all. Even the Axemen of Lasana are coming forward, but I've already sort of plugged the gap with my infantry. I really need to push them around, not really just throw them through the infantry. Even the Fountain Guard are coming on in. My Guardsman's Gilead, you can see, again, I'm loving this fight. Anywhere that I am fighting, I'm absolutely crushing these uh, sort of wild men of the north. But it's just, um, it's just not happening fast enough. Shaken boys there, goodness me, do not get shaken. These are just wild men. Got my Axemen here trying to free up that trebuchet. We need that trebuchet to stay active, but uh, Kuro's really secured it up with a lot of these forces. The Herenadine Pikes are a different story. They're not quite the Rudar infantry or Rudar swordsmen that we're dealing with elsewhere. Over here you can just, yeah, you can start to see the, the silver and blue lines. They can be as good as they want when, they're, when they've got this many Mordor orcs barreling through them. It's, it's, it's just too much. For them, and, uh, and they're starting to get sort of busted down. I'm missing all of the cavalry charges <laughs> that Dol Amroth is pulling off. Um, but with all these halberds as well, they're punishing the Swan Knights every time they do get a charge off. And you see these Swan Knights, unfortunately, they were pulled back out into the Beasts of Gorgoroth, uh, who ended up breaking them. They should return from that route, though. You see over here, Haven Knights chowing into the Melkor's Abominations. Takes an awful lot of power to sort of beat uh, something like the Melkor's Abominations, but the, the Haven Knights are no joke, and backed up by the Athelan, not Felon, sorry, um, Perifil, uh, Horse Guard there, they're doing alright, but the Beasts are a different story entirely, not quite cavalry. They are, uh, yeah, something a bit more menacing, for sure. Uh, Perithil Horse Guard, interesting. So Perithil Horse Guard, they do have that uh, heavy sword there. I love that shield, that's very cool. Uh, but they have a, they've got a shield value too, probably. Usually if a unit has a shield in the back, they've usually got, say, a shield value of like three or something small, but a shield value nonetheless. So you can see here, again, brave troops of Dolamroth holding back far more than their number. 
uh, of of Uruk attackers, but uh, you know, still these these nobles are just running free, and I'm only engaging a part. Oh dear, poor boy's breaking. Um, I'm only engaging a part of Rudauer's battle line. I'm engaging it kind of well, you know, even these enslavers are kind of struggling. But, um, you know, you see victory, victory for, yeah, Gondor all across the line. I'm, I'm having victory is certain, but it's just not quick. And Dol Amroth really needs me to be a bit faster here to sort of get around him. Axman Lassac here on the flank. The problem is these guys are on the flank. They're getting sort of uh, the occasional charge. They're getting volleys into them. I'm throwing my own Pelagor. Uh, marine javelins into the attackers but what well, into the fraud from jabs i think i was wanting to take out um i know these guys are you know not heavily armored but they're they're quite an impressive unit i wanted to bring them down uh, but probably that's enough firepower for them now i'm wasting my ammunition on them i should have really pushed up those pelagon marines just to get some shots into the back or something like that Erthil Riders coming in. I think I was trying to get a quick charge into those Rudar Clansmen, but he's caught me out with the Entmore's Troll Hunters, and he's got uh, a unit of Coldfell Maidens chasing me, trying to throw my javelins, drop some of those uh, those javelin-wielding maidens there, uh, which is good to see some of them getting brought down. Keeps the mobility on my end. If I can keep my mobility, starting to sort of get them whittled down, that's great. Over here, again, I'm having victory. Well, for now, I'm having victory. But the trebuchet is not yet free. And the trebuchet team here is getting backstabbed by those Herenidine nobles there. You can see that fantastic morning star. Goodness sake, yeah, so that's what's providing them that AP in melee. Goodness, absolutely intimidating looking weapon for sure. And right now, I mean, 44 for 56. But we are actually, like, percentage wise, we're winning, but we've not really scratched. The likes of the beasts, we've not scratched them. The Olakai are still very, very healthy as well. Perithal horse archers running along. See, your Josh is. Ooh, good little charge there. Very nice. Right into the Temple Guard, dropping quite a few of them, of course. Temple Guard, being as good as they are, they're going to deal some damage to the Swan Knights uh, in, in return definitely hurt them but another little charge in the back lines here it's always a risk to charge uh, halberdiers but it's something that uh, that yeah, our dull Hamroth player who i think yeah i'd say i think ten but i can't quite uh, can't quite remember the name sometimes um is, is he's got to just take whatever charge he can Herendine Pikes there. Now that Herendine Pikes have sort of organized, they should start to win that. What I should maybe do with my with my Axeman is give a quick little shunt forward just to get properly stuck in there because that would start to do quite well for me, but my micro is just being torn here, there, and everywhere. Veterans of Asgiliath getting engaged now, but I'll slice and dice those, uh, those Axemen. Again, same thing sort of happening here. The Pikes have managed to really organize the line a bit outranging my fountain guard now that yeah we've got some uruk infantry and just to provide a bit of numbers a bit of rigidity i think that the rudauer swordsmen actually fight very well side by side with the uruk infantry uruk infantry kind of taking the hits for them with that heavier armor with that sort of bit bit of a better defensive skill but the rudauer swordsmen just have that high attack value it's enough to sort of even cleave through the heavy armor of the gondorian infantry a bit so, but something that I do love is the Gondorian infantry mixed in with Axman Lasanak. I think that's a really cool combo. Kind of the same thing on the other side, but instead of a heavy, heavy hand with that uh, that sword, I've got a heavy axe, uh, you know, wielded by one of the Axman Lasanak. But you see, my line is just too deep. It's it's just unnecessary. I really, you know, because of how quickly I need to deal with this and how much support Kuro sent over man. here. I really should have just thinned this line out, grabbed a few more, and, and taken my time, been a bit more patient, and sent more and more of my troops over here to deal with the uh, to deal with the Rudauer forces. You can see more axes being thrown up and over right into my poor Axeman Lasanic. That armor is going to shrug off a lot of that damage, but it's still it's a blue axe that's being <laughs> hurled at your face. Which is is not pleasant. All oh, my Pelagon Marines out of ammunition. Again, I'm trying to. You can see from the mini map actually. Yeah, uh, you can see what I'm trying to achieve. Just this full surround. But that Rudauer morale. This is what I was. We were talking. I was talking to Kuro about this or during and after the fight. Just that the, the Rudauer morale is just allowing him to do this. You couldn't do this with with a lot of evil man factions. They would have broken by now. 
for all this pressure, but Rudow is just able to sit and take this. And that's why I, that's one of the things that I really liked about Rudow. Well, I still do, of course, but that's uh, Rudow was one of the first factions that I was actually starting to get some wins with when I was playing uh, when I was playing Reforged back in the day, and it was um, you know when I first started. And that's that morale is really a thing that took it because morale was always something that I loved from from Shogun. I always had to have high morale units just because yeah, I found if my men stayed in the fight. I would win. Um, dealing a little bit more damage to those beasts, but we still have heavy numbers of the beasts. Oh god, if these Fountain Guard could turn around getting some stabs in, because the Fountain Guard will melt those beasts if I can get them in an extended fight with them. That would be absolutely fantastic. See, Dol Amroth's infantry, they held incredibly well for a very, very long time, but they have now perished. What we need now is just... Oh, my Penneth Gallon Cav running off. We just need um, we just need Dol Amroth to start trying to pick some pick his moments throughout here. We're at seventy four for seventy two, so yeah, the the percentages have started to really switch up now that these big powerful units are focusing in on me. That was, I mean, of course they didn't have a lance, but that was an unfortunate charge there. I would have expected a bit more damage up against the the backs of the enslavers. That really could have turned it around for us if we got uh, you know a good sort of twenty enslavers killed there by that charge. Maybe I'm. Probably, probably wouldn't have been able to do that much anyway. Fountain Guard, again, the, the Olakai. I've not had to fight the Olakai yet today, but the Fountain Guard would be perfect for this. So I need these Fountain Guard to stay in the fight. Even though there's only 24 of them now, I need them to stay as long as they possibly can just to try and deal some damage to the Olakai because the rest of my army is not going to be able to touch them. Uh, you can see over here we started to get some breaks in the enemy line, but we started to get some breaks in my lines too. Um... I've no longer really got this big continuous circle. You're starting to see, yeah, that's a beefy unit of infantry getting chased off now. That's very, very scary to see. Over here, my uh, my Axemil with Sanak over on this side, they were taking all of that axe fire. They've, uh, they've almost bolted off as well. Herenidine nobles still active on the field. That's 21 Herenidine nobles. That's very, very scary to see. They've got great little charge value on them, and they're more than happy to stay in the fight for a while after. My uh, guards of Gilead moving in quite heroically to try and uh, try and best these beasts of Gorgoroth. I think they were going for their Enidai nobles actually, but uh, hey, they're uh, they're in they're in the fight with this now. They will have a good anti-cavalry bonus that will definitely hurt the beasts. And we've yeah we've inflicted the cows. Well done, well done, guards. Another one, good stuff. Bringing those guys down. They have actually suffered a huge amount of damage from uh, from other sources. They'll keep mind another break. Yeah, now that. Now that people are starting to get a little bit separated, we no longer have uh, that big, uh, big organised fight that the Gondorians do like. Uh, we're starting to see see some shattering in the line. I've got a little hold out over here, still trying with a little one times speed. Everything should be pretty easy to keep a hold off now, or keep keep an eye on, I should say. Gondorian archers. This is always the sad thing when I've still got ammunition at this stage again. You know, because I'm, I'm just, I'm just a. Uh, it's such a, what's well, like I guess a basic fight. You know, if a fight happens in a routine manner, I, I'm I'm gold. I'm gold. You know, if I can if I can have uh, if I can have my skirmish phase, if I can have uh, have my sort of yeah, messing around and then my proper melee clash, it's great. But you see here, I've still got ammunition that I need to use. That rock has actually saved my life there, and it's allowed my guards with Gilead to get some great damage up against the. Uh, the uh, Herenidai nobles just because they got stuck on that rock. Absolutely fantastic. Oh no, they've gotten broken by the uh, the Rude Hour Swordsman though. Um, I think this is really the only holdout I've got now. Surrounded by the, the bodies of the beasts. The Olakai, this troll drummer battering away right in their faces as the as the final stand of our of our silver forces. Um, that have pushed on into the south. I don't quite know why Rude Hour's here. The, the Hillmen of the North, just uh, on a little desert holiday, it seems. It kind of makes sense for Mordor to be here. Mordor can just be anywhere, pretty much. Um, arrows coming up and over, and probably just, yep, yeah, the. Oh, Javelin's getting chucked up and over, yeah. Not really minding any friendly fire that they get at this point. Fountain Guard fighting to death, yeah, that's, that's uh, the final final chapter it seems. I've still got some fountain guard over here it looks like, but they're they're about to get broken as well, eight of them. The nobles coming in for a backstab against my veterans of his Gilead. I didn't see my general die. He might have he might have died without me noticing. He, I don't see him there. Yeah, yeah he must have died. 
Yeah. Unless he's unless he's worked his way in somewhere. Um, by the way, the veterans trying their very best at the end of the fight here. What do we end up with? 80%. Which, I mean, I feel for, uh, of course, for a siege, you, you want it to be... I find a close siege is always, like, verbally like 85 and above uh, for the winning side. But I think for a field battle, it's definitely a bit different. Because field battles tend to be pretty even until they're suddenly not. So my... Don't worry too much. Don't try not to get too hung up about percentages. Like, if you're worried about not sending me something because you don't think it's close, don't worry too much about percentages. Um, uh, for a siege, yeah, try try and think about percentages. But for a field battle, try and just think about how is the battle flowing. Like, when does the... Oh, yeah, my general survived really for a long time. <laughs> Trolls. Uh, I think there's even Inquisitors involved in that. Yeah, Temple Inquisitors, Melkor's uh, Abominations, Olag High were involved in that. Jesus the sake. Um, so yeah, what do we got? Um, Veterans of Asgaliath, yeah. Got a lot of kills with their ammunition. Just pouring shots in. Fountain Guard there. Could have done a lot better, but I think he Kuro was, was great to get his pike set up against my Fountain Guard. That was really smart of him. Um, I think if I had sent my Fountain Guard to two different... The, the problem is I had both my Fountain Guards sent over on that right flank. That was just because it was a bit of a disorganized attack. If I had one fountain guard coming around to the right instead, that would have been a lot better for me. Um Project of Asgillia, they're 411 from one of them. That's really quite nice to see from a pitch battle. Um, my poor spearman. What I should have done was really... Uh, I ended up sending my spearman in to sort of engage the infantry right at the start. Should have tried to get my inf my Gondorian infantry set up there, pull the spearmen back to start guarding the back lines, chasing away any any nobles that maybe came around. Those Serenity nobles when they started turning up, because um, yeah, you can see they held the line very well. You know, they 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 definitely can give a good grind. Uh, infantry did, they did base. Well, these guys definitely did what I was hoping from. Um, the poor uh, it depends what they're getting uh, sent up against, of course. But uh, but yeah, I'm any any time that a man at arms is getting over a hundred kills, I'm pretty happy. And apart from depends what you're fighting, of course. Pelagar Marines there, uh, 111. That's quite you know yeah, that's quite nice. But I think again because of the chaos of the fighting, I wasn't able to pick my targets very well with these guys. I think dealing with a fraud from Javs was definitely something I was happy with because those hit two hit point units, so I'm I'm happy enough with that. Also, yeah, my Pen of Skill and Cav, I think I could have been a lot better with them. I think giving them that armor upgrade would have been a lot nicer. Uh, much more difficult to start shoot them down as they're running around in the enemy lines. Um, but yeah, no, happy enough. And uh, it was a good, it was a good sort of initial scrap there. I just wish, uh, you know, I wish I had deployed basically right next to Dol Amroth and kind of come up. And, and if, if I had fully surrounded that trebuchet, because if that trebuchet couldn't have gotten off most of its shots. I think it, at most half its shots were wasted, you know, uh, just not able to be used. So had I been able to fully surround that, that would have been far, far better. Uh, but no, anyway, it was, was an awful lot of fun. Um, Going to be all those prisoners grabbing all my boys. <laughs> but yeah, cool. Uh, so I'll I'll be rattling through some more of my 0 0.98 fights now. And uh, yeah, I mean, should be 0 0.98 for, for the foreseeable. Well, yeah, for, for now on. I, I won't be doing any more 0 0.97 fights. Um, I've not yet uninstalled 0 0.97, but I suspect I will shortly. Um, but yeah, cool. Thank you guys very much. I will see you there.